Hey guys, it's Lisa. I don't know if you've heard, but Google is retiring yet another product. <laughs> um, they are killing off the Google AdWords keyword tool. Now, I'm being a little dramatic. They're not really killing it, I guess. They're just moving it and rebranding it to the keyword planner. So instead of going to the Google AdWords keyword tool like you normally would, you have to log in to AdWords. And so if you go to the Google AdWords, AdWords keyword tool now, you will see this notice at the top and it'll direct you over to the keyword planner. The good news is though, you don't have to buy ads. A lot of people were worried that you have to buy advertising to use it. You don't, you just have to create an AdWords account. And I guess Google is doing this because they want to encourage more people to sign up for AdWords and possibly even spend money buying ads. So from a business standpoint, hey, can't be mad at them. I understand that. So I'm gonna talk about the main differences between the tools and help you guys use it if you haven't used it yet. But first of all, for those of you guys that don't even know what this tool is, if you're new, this is what bloggers, webmasters use to determine what topic they wanna to use for their website. So if they're thinking about doing a website on used cars, for example, they would come here. What you should do is check the exact match because that will show you how many people search for this phrase exactly instead of the broad or phrase which may show variations or related phrases. So you would hit search and then Google will show you how many local and global monthly searches exist for that keyword. Okay, so that's basically how people have been using this tool for years to help them do research for their, their sites. So now I'm inside the keyword planner and the first thing you're gonna do is click search for keyword and add group ideas. And before, like I just showed you, you would choose broad, exact, or phrase. Well, one of the biggest difference with this tool is that everything is based on the exact match. So there's nothing to select anymore. So whatever you type in here is gonna show you exact match results. So you can come down here and you can target your keyword by country, by language, by Google search or Google partners, and then you can even add negative keywords, keywords you don't wanna show up at all. Um, this is an area that'll probably get used a lot. You can basically set up filters. So if you only wanna search for keywords that have a minimum of 2000 searches per month, you can set that there. And then average CPC, that is cost per click. Now remember this tool is really for advertisers. It's not really for bloggers, content publishers, but of course we use it. For example, if you're thinking of making money with AdSense from this site and you wanna get an idea for how, how much income potential is there for AdSense, then this number will tell you a lot. So for example, if you see that the keyword you're searching for has a bunch of keywords with five, six, seven dollar CPCs, meaning advertisers are paying five, six, seven dollars per click, that lets you know that there's some income potential for AdSense because remember, we get 68% of that cost per click. So there's definitely still relevance here for us because we can see how much AdSense potential is there. And then for competition, remember, this is not for competition of websites. This is for competition of other advertisers. But you can assume that if there is a lot of competition for ads, there's probably a lot of competition for websites as well. All right, so you can choose to check this or not. So then you're gonna click get keyword ideas. And the first screen is just gonna show you ad groups. Again, this is really for the advertisers, but you can also look at these as well to get ideas for other keywords. But let's go over to the keyword idea tab. And as you can see, here's the keyword I searched for, used cars. Now you might be wondering, wait a minute, didn't you have the CPC set at a minimum of $2, then why is it showing this? Well, it's always going to show you whatever you typed in. But if you come down here to the related keywords, notice you won't see any results lower than $2 for the CPC, and you're not going to see any average monthly searches lower than 2,000, because that's what I set up for my filter. The other thing I wanted to point out was average monthly searches. If you remember with the Google AdWords keyword tool, you would have the local and the global monthly searches. Now the keyword planner just uses the average and I believe it's a 12 month average. If you click this question mark, it will tell you what it is and they tell you how they arrive at this number. So 
There are some other differences, you know, here and there, but the two biggest differences are the ones that I talked about, the exact match, keyword being the default, um, and then the average monthly searches instead of the local and global. Now, the question that I have is, what about those of us who use the keyword tools that use the Google AdWords data? For example, I use the, the Longtail Pro software to do keyword research. And of course, these software tools use the Google AdWords keyword data. I'm guessing this is still going to work. They're just going to use this information, but I didn't know with us now having to log into AdWords, how that's going to impact the functionality of the software. I guess it's still going to work and all the keyword tools that use this data will still be able to work just fine. So if anybody has some insight on that, then please let me know, but everything should be okay. So um, those are the biggest differences uh, of, between the keyword planner and the AdWords tool. If you guys have any questions, you know, feel free to leave them in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. I don't think this is uh, too big of a deal. A lot of people were freaking out because they didn't think they would have access to any kind of keyword data. That's not the case. You don't have to buy AdWords ads. You can still use this tool. There's just some differences in how the data is presented. So thanks for watching you guys and I'll see you later. Bye-bye.